lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. That's my only option After you ripped the veil And gave me the gospel So I could see the truth So I could walk with you And that's the greatest thing That anyone can ever do You really saved my life When I was worse at it An addict on many levels For pleasure, pain, and passion I 
could never grasp it Cause it's never lasting But Lord you everlasting I burn my flesh to ashes So I can walk with you Your love is unconditional So even though I struggle with my past You still see me through Sometimes I get it wrong I fail plenty times But I get back up and I ride Your son live and die For my eternal life So now I'm still tight God inside you give me life Now I'm saying I will fight All my pain hurt And my struggles in my past life Lord you wipe away my tears every night Here I am to worship here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you are my God. You're all together lovely God, and all together worthy God, and all together wonderful, so wonderful to me. Amen, amen. You're all together worthy. Amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Well, we made it back. <laughs> we made it back again. Welcome to Relation Radio. This is Minister Cedric. We're on uh, Relentless Pursuit. We are relentlessly pursuing God. Today is Friday, November the 6th. Woo, November the 6th. What a beautiful day. Just want y'all to know, 23 more days, and yours truly has a birthday. Yes, God truly blessed me by bringing me here. But um, hopefully everybody had a wonderful week, and today is the culmination of that wonderful week. We had a lot of things going on this week, a lot of things to be thankful for. You know, God is still blessing us, and I want to make sure I send that shout out. Anybody who needs prayer, we're going to pray with you, pray for you. You know, we we are here as a family. Well, I got, uh, got a little something, something I want to talk about today, I think. Uh, I think it will benefit most of us. Um, I got my uh, – I, I know my buddy Terry is on this evening, so we're going to have us a little open discussion tonight. And uh, but before I get into the open discussion, I wanted to start it out with, with, with just a little something I, I, I was reading earlier, and um, I, I was reading out of the book of James, chapter 1 today, and, you know, it kind of it's kind of going to go in line with a few things, because with everything that's going on in this country, in this world, but definitely in our country, and let's break it on down to our neighborhoods and to our cities, there's a lot going on, and so... I was just perusing the Bible a little bit, talked to a friend of mine, talked to Terry, actually, and he mentioned a scripture to me. It made me think, and I had to go back and read it. So I wanted to open up with just a little reading from James chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. Now, just before you get upset, it's not that long, okay? These are very short verses here. So, um, again, James chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, and it simply reads this, and I'm reading from the The New Living Translation, it says, this letter is from James, the slave of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings, faith and endurance. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, here it is, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I hear that, needing nothing, right? If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is not unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Hey, man, may the Lord have a blessing to the reason of his word. Now, when I think about that and what I was thinking about, it, 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 it kind of made me think about something, right? Uh, 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 it made me think about character, right? And those of us, uh, character, character is defined in, in the dictionary as the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. 
plain and simple, it's your mental and moral quality, right? It's just the you as an individual, right, right, right? And so as I read that, I started thinking, you know, remember that God said this, God said this, God said this. You know, go back to Genesis, uh, uh, in the book of Genesis, he said, let us make mankind in our own image and our likeness, right? So I want you to think about this as we get started today. I want you to think about this, and this is what really got me going, was that fallen. So I won't name any of them, but I just, I just want to put it out like this. There are those of us who lead these exceptional lives as far as the public is concerned. So when we're out in public, we just we are great people. Our lives are perfect, right? But but as we're out there like that, people get to know us. Our names are just household names, and, and people know us just by our talents and our gifts, right? And God has blessed us. But, but what happens? What if, you're, if our lives fell apart at home because of our, our many indiscretions? I don't know what your indiscretions could be. It could be that, 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 that you go to strip clubs. It could be that you spend too much money. It could be that you're a liar. It could be you're a thief. It could be anything at all. But, but what happens is, here it is, our public life doesn't line up with our private life, right? And, 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 and so people may not see your failures at home, but what happens? What happens? You see, one of the things I want you to think about is this. If we are to be the ones that represent Christ, right, remember back in Genesis, right, basically we are to be the image bearers for God. You see, at all times we've got to think about it this way. We've got to be people of character and integrity, right? Because God designed us to be people of integrity. That's the way he designed us. That's the way he made us. And what we have to do as people of good character and integrity is we have to strive to do what's right in all areas of our lives. See, we can't just strive to do what's right on Sunday when we go to church. We are perfect Christians from, here it is, here it is. I would say from 6 a.m. when we woke up, (laughs) until we go to bed, but I, but I think we are perfect Christians. Check this out, check this out. Some of us can't even pass this. Church started at 10 o'clock at 9.59. We become a perfect Christian, right? And church usually lets out around 11.30, and at 11.31 we go back to bed. No, 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 no. We are to strive 24-7 every day, all day, to be uh, uh, image bearers of Christ, to be perfect Christians, right? I know, I know none of us are perfect. We're never going to get there, but we should never stop trying just because we, we, we know that we're not perfect. We should keep trying. So, and, and I bring these points up to say this. If you will compromise an area of your life, right, any one area, just pick an area of your life, if you're going to compromise that for the enemy, then I need you to ask yourself, can you be trusted in other areas of your life, Right? See, the point is, I believe that God expects us to be his image bearers. So I, I believe that God expects us to be people of great character, of godly character and integrity. And when you read in the book of James, James speaks of people who are, who, who are double-minded. When we get through verse 7 and 8, he's talking about being double-minded and being unstable in everything that you do. He says that, 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 that they're like the waves of the sea blown and tossed. Uh, by the wind. See, if we lack character, if you lack character in in any area of your life, it will affect the other areas of your life. But I tell you this, I tell you this, here's the good news. By Christ's spirit, we can find it. We can find that strength. We can discover that strength to live as God wants us to live. And so I wanted to leave you with that today. I know I like to start off with, with something like this. I want to get your juices flowing. I want you to be thinking about that. So my prayer for everybody today is I just, I, just, I just want to thank God for making all of us in his image, right? And I just want to ask God to help each of us, right, to live the way that reflects good character, good godly character upon you, Lord. So in Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, ah. Uh, I'm sorry I had to get that out. It's just it was sitting on me, and uh, I hope it made sense to everybody. It made a little bit of sense. It made sense to me, so <laughs> at least I got it. But I wanna, I wanna, uh, uh, Terry, are you on? I wanna go ahead and introduce uh, uh, my, my my co-host here, uh, uh, Terry. <laughs> hey, how, how you doing, Mr. Cedric? How you doing? I'm oh, doing I'm right. rocking and rolling right now. I'm rocking and rolling. And, and my brother That's Jason, my brother Jason, in here today. 
All right, Jay. Uh, 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 Sister Kim, uh, can you uh, check out Jason's mic here? I think he's still muted there. Hey, what's uh, up, Cedric? Can you hear me now? Oh, I got you, man. How you doing today, brother? I'm good. How about you, Ah, oh, man, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I, I'm feeling, I'm going to be honest. I got to be honest with both of you. I've been, uh, I've been sipping on what I call the Kool-Aid. I got this little concoction that I drink before I work out, man, it gets me hyped. I'm like, <laughs> oh, so I've been, I've been sipping on a little bit of that because after the show, you know, I got to get my work out in. So I've been sipping on that just a little bit. So I'm feeling really good today, feeling really good. Uh, man, again, today, if y'all don't mind, because this was something that just hit me, and again, with everything that's going on, I want to talk a little bit about character, you know, uh, 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 you know, and, and I want to keep it general, but, man, I, I, I was having some discussions, and I've met so many people, and, 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 and I've counseled with people, and I've had people counsel me, that character really, truly means something to me, and, um and, and and I get frustrated about that sometimes, how people don't um, – it seems like to me a lot of people don't value uh, uh, their character as much as I tend uh-huh. to put a lot of value in it, even though don't ask me to be somewhere at exactly a certain time. I'm either going to show up real early or maybe a couple minutes late. I apologize, just how I am. But um, I want to talk a little bit about character today. So how about you guys? Is that Okay. It sounds good to me. Sounds good. I'm now, you know, I always got to start out. I always got to start off. What is character? What is character? And I've already defined it as what I looked up earlier. But, mm-hmm. but, what, but what does it really mean uh, uh, to have? I, I, I guess let, let's fix that. Let's fix that. Let's fix that. We all know what character is. I've already defined it in my terms. And if you guys have a different meaning, feel free to, to put it out there. Let's talk about it. But I wanted to ask. As you guys were growing up, how how was your character shaped? How the man you are today? How was it developed as the way you grew up? And well, either one of you guys can start. I, I mean, for me, my you know, my family, um, my dad. Well, yeah, my family for the most part developed my character. Um, my you know, my dad. It's like one of the type of person. Like I'm. I try to be on, I'm on time. My dad was, he said, you know, always value some, value other people's time, you know, mm-hmm. and that's, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so I find myself showing up to stuff early, like 15, 20 minutes early, you know, because I want to be there on time, you know, so we can get started on time. And because again, I want to try to be respectful, but, you know, but my family really, my, you know, my family uh, played a big part in the development of my character. Okay. Okay. So, 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 like, 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 what about your family? I mean, what about? I mean, I, your dad said be somewhere on time, but character is more than being on time. Yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. Um, be respectful of others. Um, that was, you okay. know, it was a moral thing. It was being being respectful of other people. Being and, and honestly, and that came down to you know, if you're late, that basically shows to, in his eyes. He was like the way he taught us. That's, you're not being really respectful of other people. That's the reason why I was saying like, on the whole top, on being on time thing. And so it's like being respectful of other people. Uh, uh-huh. uh, don't, you know, don't um, dog other people. You know, don't, you know, be your, you know, try to be yourself, you know, in front of people. And I mind you, I haven't done a very good job with that because I'm still trying to work through some things on myself. But try to be, you know, honest with people. Be not be yeah. Be honest with people. Don't 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 lie to people. You know that really that was something that was morally a big thing. Don't lie. Don't steal. You know all those moral characteristics that that they put out. You know, they put out before us. Okay. So so your family was a huge influence on you. Well, well what yeah. about yourself, Jason? What would you like to add to that? Is how your character was shaped. Yeah. All right, Jason. Let me know when you get back, man. We're gonna Yeah, I'm gonna, here, man. Gonna... Um I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I accidentally hung up, had to get back on. Um uh just kinda of piggyback off uh, uh, what Terry was saying. I think my character was shaped large part by especially my mother. And, you know, and she just I don't know, I I don't know how she did it, but she instilled in me a sense of um 
you know, doing the right thing, right? And mm-hmm. and I kind of define character as doing the right thing when you don't have to, when, you, when you're mm-hmm. in the dark. Um, when the environment that you're surrounded by will allow you to behave in a manner less than what's right or what, or what your standards oh, are. Okay. And, mm-hmm. and it's interesting. My whole life I've walked into many work environments, and, you know, people are doing things like taking extra long on breaks and lunches, and, and it's acceptable in, in the culture, right? No one gets yelled at, no one gets fired, no one gets written up. But I, for me, myself, I could not find myself doing those things just because what resonated in my head is what my mom always taught me. You do the right thing mm-hmm. because in spite of what you're allowed to do. And, and you know, so that yeah. sense of character was developed by her. So, and, and, and it's interesting. I always tell people, like, even when I was growing up, there were some times I was probably at parties I'm not supposed to be at. And instead of me sitting there mm-hmm. enjoying myself, I had to sometimes go sit in the car and wait for my friends to get tired mm-hmm. because something in me said I ain't supposed to be here, <laughs> right? And my mom, mm-hmm. I'm talking about she's on the other side of town, and they're like, man, what's wrong with you? I'm like, yeah, you know what? I ain't supposed to be here. So although I did wrong by coming, I ain't going to do wrong by enjoying myself. I'm yeah. just going to sit in the car and wait for y'all. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you, you brought up something interesting, Jason, because this is going to be my question. How, how, did, how did your friendships, how, how did your relationships with your friends, how, did they, how have they or did they impact the shaping of your character when you were growing up? Well, you know, I think I would say yes, and it's not in a way that you think. You know, I watched, you know, especially like, you know, being a young man, I watched a lot of our homeboys, how they would treat, you know, people, especially women. And and uh-huh. I would see the impact of it, and, you know, they were my boys and all, but I told myself I would never be that man, right? And so to watch you know, I would love to say that everybody I surrounded myself by were high character people and really upbeat people, but I'm not gonna lie. You know, growing up, you hang out with some people mm-hmm. that that you know mm-hmm. may not may not may not share the same values that you did. But I would tell you just to watch them and how they operated and you know how they mm-hmm. just you know did things. It just didn't sit right with me, and it just made it resonated to me that I, I can never be that guy and I would never want to be that guy. And you know, I, I would say mm-hmm. something to them, and they'd be like, "Man, you just." You're a buster. Don't worry about all that. I'm like, man, you know, especially when it comes to females, I'm like, man, you got a sister. How would you like with somebody to do your sister like that? Man, whatever. And, you know, it was so it was just, just kind of one of those things. So I, I would say my friends and, and my friendships would kind of would kind of just resonate with me, like, what good character looks like. And, you know, and it just made me understand, like, yeah, I can be that person, and I'm going to have the same type of attitude and, and same type of uh, – uh, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, reputation they had, and I'm like, um, nah, I got there's something more for me than that. Mm, something wow. more, something more. So, 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 so like, like, like my my experience with that, and, and again, we're talking about having having good character, good morals, and good values. My 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 parents used to say, well, I tell you, um, I once heard, I worked at this one company, and uh, I was being promoted to be a corporate trainer, but one of my closest friends who was always with me, i never forget the head trainer, she says to me, be careful of the people you associate with, because those are the people, here it is, that the people who are looking at you are going to judge mm-hmm. you by. And mm-hmm. that's a very complicated way of saying it, but I remember her saying it just like that to my face. and And so... When it, when it came to me growing up, this, I'm going back in time. When, when I was growing up, I had friends, but people laughed at me because I only had, like my kids laugh at me now because I can tell you in high school, four years of high school, I had two close friends, period, <laughs> okay? Two close friends. That was it. Four years of high school. Everybody else was just somebody I knew, yes, I may have spent a little time with them. We hung out a little bit, they, but they were not my close friends. They never came to my house. They knew very little about me except what they learned at school. We didn't have long conversations. We didn't talk on the phone. No, it was none of that. It was just I had two close friends, and those two friends of mine, we were super close. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We're talking about character here. One of my friends, mm-hmm. which we are still friends to this day, um, 
his character was questionable. And and what I mean by that is one time he and I were out for a walk late at night. We were at his house. I was spending the night at his house. And we uh, we went by the grocery store, and there was a bike parked in the back of the grocery store, actually thrown in the back of the grocery store behind the big dumpster. While we were back by the dumpster looking behind it, I have no idea. But so he was like, oh, man, let me straighten these handlebars. I'm going to take this bike home. He takes the bike home. I'm walking, right? We walking together. Well, anyway, make a long story short, when his mom asked him about the bike, now we're talking about character now, guess what he said about the bike? He said, uh, she she asked him whose bike it was, and his response was, oh, Cedric, he stole that bike from Kroger's or whatever the grocery store was. What? I didn't even get on the bike. I didn't even ride the bike. So his mom, (laughs) for the longest time, pictured me as a thief. Mm. Questionable character And and it bothered Mm. me But you know what Here's the thing Here's the thing He told me That I'm going to tell you Again He told me about it Maybe A few days later A week later Or whatever I got upset with him But guess what I never did I never went back And told his mama That he made that up That he Uh he basically Found the bike I never went back And Mm -hmm. told her So when we start talking about character, and we start talking about people we associate with, we got to be careful because what if I would have just started lying on him? You know, mm. what would that have done to me? What would that have done to me growing up? How would that have affected me? How would that have affected my relationships? And and so that that, that, was, that was a really crazy thing in my life, and, and that bothered me a lot. And and so I wanted to also throw in that, that, that you know, our friendships, our relationships, they have a huge impact on on what we do as mm-hmm. individuals, what we do as people. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Y'all want, you wanted to add something in that, Terry? No, I'm just really just like, wow. It's like you're, you've got to watch, like you said, you're, the people who we associate ourselves with and how sometimes we can get lumped in with the group. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like how they say, you know, uh, birds of a feather flock, people, that's what they say, birds of a feather flock together um, type of yeah. stuff. And, and how sometimes you may not be doing nothing, but the group, or the people, or the yeah, the group that you're with, the, because they do something wrong, or they, you know, they're, you know, it really, their character has been displayed, and mm-hmm. people just have a tendency to throw it on all people. And I think I look at like with black men right now to this day, you know, um, how people have this thing: oh, black men are race, rapists. Black men are after your after your wives and. And or you know after you know white women and this all you know and how all these things yeah. are out there about and and everybody thinks they that our character they think that's our character you know they think that we're all yeah. angry you know like hey, women black women they think all black women are angry isn't that something because <laughs> excuse me I, I I think mm-hmm. I, I think that's something there because. Like, how do I say it? Like, like as 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 as, as, I, as I was saying um, um, before. Well, I, I tell you what. Um, when I think of that, how do we yeah. refute that? How do we blow that stereotype out of the water? And for me, mm. it's it's the thought is we have to we have to think of not just good character, but it has to be godly character. Correct. So, so the question is, how do we now elevate our moral standards, right, to be that of mm-hmm. God? How do we even get there? Because well, you know, like I, mm-hmm. uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. You about to say something? I'm gonna, I want, I want to catch you. I'm I, right I'm you, say you guys know, like I know, that it's just don't come overnight because we gotta make tough decisions in life. And when you're young, right, man, it's hard. They, they get those decisions that I can make now at the age of almost 50, that's a little more difficult to make when I'm 15. So how do we mm-hmm. get on the road to building that godly character? Well, I'm going to say one, like, I mean, one of the, the very first things that we need to do is we got to recognize. I mean, that's the first part where we're flawed. And when we recognize where mm. we're flawed, see, see, if you don't realize that you're flawed, you think you're perfect and you think there's nothing wrong. Uh-oh. And we see that every day in the news, you know, you know, when someone you hear people say, "Well, I don't owe 
uh, I don't have to ask for forgiveness for nothing that I've done. Well, wait a minute, hold up. All of sin and falling short of the glory of God. You're flawed, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so yeah. you've got to recognize. First, you got to recognize where you're flawed, and accept. Okay, I'm flawed in this area. I need to improve, and you need to you need to educate yourself. Educate yeah. yourself. I mean, because the Bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove mm. what is that good and acceptable will of, our, will of God. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So yeah. and if you don't study, if you don't be a good student of others who have good character, I mean, I mean, and, and also, you know, not study the word, but also be a student of those who have good character. One of the things I say is I'm a people watcher. I am so much yeah. of a people watcher. I, I, I went Uh-oh. to, uh, this is going to sound, I, <laughs> I was, I'm a people watcher, and I watch you. I'm a student of you. I'm going I'm to try to watch you, you know, how you do things, how you handle situations, how you do this, you know, and I want to see how you do stuff because I want to yeah. learn, you mm. know. And if I, you know, yeah. and if I don't know, I'm going to try to ask at least. If I don't ask, you know, then hopefully, you know, you'd be kind enough to share. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean for real because 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 again, you know when you when, 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 when I'm thinking in in, in, the, in James since I, I read James it's fresh on my mind, I like the part mm-hmm. where where James I think it's around the twenty third twenty through twenty two verses, but he talks about laying aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, right? And 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 and, and what mm-hmm. we have to do. And, and this is the biblical. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna read. It. Oh, okay, it's James twenty one, James one twenty two, twenty one twenty two. It says, "Lay aside okay. our filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself." Listen, building that 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 good character that we think about, it takes practice. Mm-hmm. We yep. got to resist the enemy. I tell you. I tell you, one of the biggest corruptors of character, one of the, in my opinion, one of the biggest corruptors of character is doing stuff the easy way. I don't, y'all, mm. y'all did not hear me. It's doing mm. it the easy way. See, a lot of times when we do stuff the easy way, it's not complete, right? Because we don't, we, we're not very right. thorough with the work. Our our workmanship mm-hmm. is not that of Christ. Is we put mm-hmm. it together quickly. We just wanted to get the mm-hmm. task out of the way. And I'm saying, when we start talking about building godly character, think about this way, think about this way, think about this way. Uh, 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 what is it profit a man? Oh, y'all don't want me to go there. Y'all don't, I'm, I'm not even going to put the scripture. I'm just going to let it be. Y'all do not want me to go there. <laughs> when we talk say, about, it for the, say it for the people in the back, Cedric. Say it for the people in the back. Uh, for the people in the back. I mean, what is it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You know, you giving mm-hmm. up everything you got to have something that's temporary. And I'm going to give you all some Cedric 101. The problem we have with our character today, the reason, the reason it's so easily corrupted is because we keep trying to apply temporary fixes to permanent problems. Y'all don't, y'all don't hear me? I'm saying I'm being honest. And, 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 and that's the thing. Building godly character, it's not about earning salvation. See, a lot of people get it mixed up because you can't, you, listen, you can't work your way into heaven. I don't care how many good deeds you do. It ain't going to happen. You can't work your way into the kingdom, right? Salvation itself is free. God gives it to us free. It's a gift. Am I right? Mm-hmm. When we start talking about building that character, we really, really got to come down to earth and we really got to look in that mirror. You know, let's mm-hmm. talk about that process of growing. And here it is. Check it out. Check it out. This is the beautiful thing about character. This is what mm-hmm. I call uh, character building, godly character building, right? Here it is. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to say it like this. Y'all better get this. Here you go. Mm-hmm. It's the process of growing closer and closer to God, to, so much to the point that we rely on him to assist all of our efforts to resist the enemy. That's it. Mm. Huh? Okay. What you think? What you I, think? I think that's good. I, 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 I think that's good, Cedric, and, and, and I think you kind of hit on it uh, when you talked about building character. And I, and I think, you know, what resonated with me when we think about this is that mm. we don't value character as much as we used to. Mm. You know, one of the things right. that I do up with, with my granddad, he was saying, man, your man's mm. as good as his word. And we would see yeah. people 
and these people may have a lot of money driving nice cars, and my grandpa taught me, like, that dude ain't no good. I'm looking at him like, man, grandpa, he got a nice suit. He got he got the nice car. He got all that money. Mm-hmm. He's like, that man ain't worth his word. Yeah. You know, you can't, you, you can't trust mm-hmm. that man as far as you can throw him. And, and, and he instilled that value in me. And so when Woo. I watch these kids nowadays and I watch our culture nowadays, we don't have the same. Yeah. I can care less how you got your money. You, you got the money. Right. You know, if you lie, cheat, right. steal to get it. You know, mm-hmm. we have a value for uh, uh, the outcome. You know, when you, when you said that scripture, what does it benefit a man to conquer the world only to lose their soul? We're not thinking mm-hmm. about the long term, the internal. We're talking about, like, I just conquered the world. Right now, yeah. I, I, you know, my yeah. attorney, my I, I may, I may, I may just sacrifice and turn to my attorney for it, but at least I got the world in my hand. And, and, and you said it yourself: we, we're so temporary in our thinking. We're so just here, right, right now in our thinking. And I think that, that I, I think that is what causes the character breaks because most times when I see people break their character, it's it, yeah. it, it's about that moment, you know. And it's about what can I get done in this moment. And and to build on what you say about character building, first and foremost, you got to think about something more than just the here and now. You know, you got to think about long term. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. yeah. You know what? I can make that extra dollar, man. You know what? I can I can come up on this deal. You know, right, man? That that's gonna that's gonna put me in a good spot. But now I just screwed mm-hmm. over, man. And for the rest of my life, that dude's gonna think of me as a crook, right? And everybody yeah. he talked to mm-hmm. is gonna. He's going to tell him I'm a crook because of the experience. And, and, and that's mm-hmm. something I have to live with for the rest of my life. And, and the question is, is that money worth it, right? And too many people today, they'll mm-hmm. say, yeah, it is. But I ain't never going to see that man again, you know. Mm-hmm. He don't know me. I don't know him. And, and you know, so, I, you know, as you were talking about that whole character, I, I think you are absolutely right that we do sacrifice the temporary, the here and now, uh, for something longer and greater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I like to say we sacrifice our our greater goal for that temporary goal for the here and now. We need self gratification right now, and, and we lose. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, we, we lose or we delay the blessing that God has for us. You know, we do one of those two things. Either we, we you know, I I I go back and I, I use King Saul. I use King Saul. You know, the prophet, mm-hmm. the prophet, the prophet said, "Up, uh, hold up." God already let him know. Hey, damn, you gonna come and he gonna he gonna pray over the offering. He gonna do his thing. But Saul said, "Oh no, they about to attack." And his men got up uptight. And what happened? You guessed it. Saul didn't wait. He did He just his character could not hold up. Would not hold up under the weight, under the burden of satisfying the people. But you know. So, so when we start talking about character, we done got out, we done done some things, we done done some crazy things, and it's to hurt our feelings. You know, to to start back rebuilding that character, to build better character, I say the very first thing we have to do, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is, is once we stand up, right, we admit, we confess that sin, and we move forward. Is we gotta first start by honoring God. We gotta start mm-hmm. by honoring God. I was I was talking to a friend of mine today, and I consider him a very close friend. As a matter of fact. He, he's on the cusp of being a brother, blood brother kind of relationship. He's on the cusp. I don't think he's going to ever get there, but it don't matter because it's for God to determine that, not, you know, I'm just going to be here. <laughs> and this brother, this brother has a very, let's put it this way. This brother is upright. And he loves God. And he talks about God. Now, I'm not saying I'm bad about him. I want you all to know I'm not bashing this brother. This is a discussion he and I had right. today. And this brother huh? is on fire for God. Check this, though. But because of certain beliefs that he held, that he holds, he would follow somebody who, had, who does not display one, who does not display good character or godly character at all. And I asked him this question. I said, so... If you had influence over this particular person, what would you say? How would you handle it? He said, "Well, I would, I would, uh, I would basically, you know, talk to him about God. I would talk to him about being a better person." I said, "But would you still mm-hmm. follow him?" And he said, "No." I said, "But you're following him now." And the point I'm trying to make is, his rhetoric, his talk, was awesome. I mean, the the, I mean, awesome. 
but his action left a, made me a little bit concerned. So, so how do we get to the point where we want, I guess we want to be like Hannah. We want to start praising God. We want to give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praises. How do we get to that point where we can start doing that? Does that make sense? Did I make the question right? Because sometimes I get a little carried away in my thoughts. Could, yeah, could you, could, you re, could you replay that one more time? Let me elaborate on that. I think the first thing, yeah. I think in order to, to reestablish our character, to start to develop godly character, first and foremost, we need to honor God. Right? But how right, do we right. start to do that? How do we start to do that? Well, we honor God, one, by studying his word. And not only studying his word, but taking his word and applying it to our lives. Um, mm. that, and, and, that, and that's how we honor God. Um, it's one thing to say that we are and another thing to do it. And to, and mm. so, and I guess, and that kind of brings me to something that, that we were talking about, that, that you all were just talking about. I have a problem with people that say, okay, well, I'm a Christian, but yet they, they condone somebody else's bad character. And they don't Uh-oh. stand up. And, all be, and, they, and they just stay, and they, and they stick with that person just because he may look like them or he may be in the same political party as them or he may be, you know. And I'm sitting there like, wait a minute, whatever happened to character here? You know, mm. whatever happened to uh, being someone about whatever happened to being honest, whatever happened to uh, uh, telling the truth, what you know, whatever happened to uh, 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 just all the good things, you know, about being a leader that you the characteristics of a good leader, um, having self control, you know, what I'm saying, whatever mm. happened to all that, you're these people that I'm seeing now, I'm like, okay, you say that you're a Christian, but yet you're condoning. Someone that's out of control, that's not displaying any any godly characteristics, is not even trying to develop any. It doesn't seem like you're trying to develop any godly characteristics, but you're going to support that. That's what I just don't understand. That's what I don't understand. Mm. But how, wow. do, you, but how yeah. do we get to that point? <laughs> apply the word, apply the study, and then apply what we've learned. Yeah, and I think to, to build off that, I think you said, how do we start developing that character? And for me, it always starts, you know, it starts for me with submission. And I've got to submit myself to something great, mm. right? Um, like I was talking about yeah. earlier, I know what the world tells me, go make that money. It don't matter how you make it, just go get that money, go make that money, man. And I have to submit myself to what God says, like you said, what is the benefit of man to conquer the world only mm-hmm. to lose his soul? I've got to submit myself mm-hmm. to, to, to God's word and, and, and everything he tells me. Uh, and that part of that is the studying. It is the praying. It is the fellowshipping. Uh, but I think the biggest challenge we come across, you know, especially as Christians, you know, to talk about what you're talking about, Terry, is how do I submit mm-hmm. to God over the things that my own self, right? right. How do I, mm-hmm. you know, stand up for the things of God when I'm in a world that says, you know, that I have to live in? And it's that submission that we have to go through to say, you know what, I don't care what the world says. I don't care what, you know, may come from this decision. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to honor God. And I think when we start yeah. talking about building character, that's the first part. And I, and I think that's, mm-hmm. that's a real test. You know, my pastor told me it's not the decision mm-hmm. you make. It's the subsequent decisions after that you have to. And that mm-hmm. resonates in my life because, you know, I've made a decision to be a man of God. And I get reminded yeah. uh, frequently when I want to go out there and do something that everybody else is doing that it's probably okay for 99% of the folks. But because I've made mm-hmm. the decision to be a man of God, that subsequent decision that come, come after that is do I, do I honor that original decision or do I go against it? And doing mm-hmm. those times, I can't say I always did the things that honor God, but those times where I did make that choice, those are character builders. You know, and and I think when yeah. you start trying to build that character, you got to have, like you said, you got to start with a uh, w- w- with something to build from it. And for me, it, it's that I've made a decision to be a man of God and and, and to and to put God at center, focal point, um, it, and first and foremost in my life. Mm. <laughs> you reminded me of uh, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews eleven, and it reads something like this. Yeah, I got to excuse me, my, my Bible 101 days is what they are. But it says, 
<laughs> but without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him, right? For he who comes to uh-huh. God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Listen, another step, I think, I think once we learn to honor God, we got to start seeking God. Sometimes mm-hmm. I must wear, bam, I just react. It's a natural instinct. I'm ready, mm. right? But then after it's all said and done, when it's over and I had a chance to think about it, I have to ask myself, did you pray about that before you made that move, that, uh. move, that reaction? In other words, did you seek God before you sought to resolve the issue? And and, and I, think, mm. I, I think that as we as we try to develop that character in ourselves that that we we need to earnestly believe that that God himself can solve the problem for uh for us and that and that and that the reason we can't get the problem solved ourselves is because we lack faith right we we mm. we have problems that faith is issue and, and sometimes it is a faith issue and that's the reason we don't seek God the way we should right because mm. I know Matthew mm. uh, six, uh, I think it's Matthew six thirty three says, "Seek ye first the kingdom." All right, all right, right. The kingdom of mm-hmm. God and all His righteousness and all things shall be added to you. Right. So if mm-hmm. we are diligently, if we are really truly seeking God, we we, we, we seek mm-hmm. the kingdom first. And and, and check this mm-hmm. out. Check this out. Here's something else. Here's something else. Uh, 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 remind you, we're talking about character here, but here's here's a benefit. To seeking God, to honoring God, now seeking God. Check it out. Check mm-hmm. it out. Here it is. Mm-hmm. It takes faith to move like that. Yeah. So we're developing mm-hmm. our faith walk as well, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 that's the thing. And, and, and in this world right now, because here's what we depend on. Uh, I believe here's what a lot of us depend on. Here is education. We we depend on our education. We we we, we depend on our gifts and our talents. Uh, uh, how much money we make, you know what I'm saying? We depend on all of our own resources, but we forget that if we just depend on the one resource that, that, that got us here in the beginning, that one resource that, that, that keeps us here while we're here, man, I'm telling you, we can take a giant mm. leap, okay? Y'all y'all heard that saying, you can mm. take a giant leap. No, let's take a giant leap of faith. And, 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 and that's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting a little carried away. But, but I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think once we start to do this, I think once we start to do this, we start building up our faith walk, and 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 it's like it's mm. like anything. It's like building anything. You know, you may not wake up in the morning and just have this 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 this, this overabundance of faith, right? You know, uh, 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 if you were gonna go up and jump out of an airplane, you wouldn't just put on a put on a suit, grab a parachute, put on a pair of shoes, jump in an airplane, and go up. You don't even know how to. Pull the shoe. You don't know nothing about no rip cords. Do you have a reserve shoe? You don't know the wind speed. Can I control this shoe? Uh, uh, am I 450 pounds? I know this little shoot that I got to them. Uh, uh, I forget the nomenclature on it. But I know this, this parachute is only designed to hold 300 pounds worth of equipment. But if you already 400 pounds, you're in a lot of trouble. We don't just do that. It's like building a house one brick at a time. And that's how faith comes, mm-hmm. right? And, and we have mm-hmm. to practice this. You know, I like to consider myself under construction, not because I consider myself a tough guy with a hard hat. No, because I'm broken, right? I'm half put together. I haven't been walking with Christ as long as I should have been, could have been, would have been, but I would be here right now, and God is wanting to bless me. So so for me, I want to recognize that that it's important that, that I not only honor God, but I seek God. And while I'm seeking God, I need to be building up some faith. I need to be putting some skin in the game. Well, I, I'm sorry. I let, I, let, I let one of y'all have a word. No, no, that no, that's good. no that's I, good. I wanted, I wanted to put that out there because what happens when we get our faith walk on point? When we're walking in faith, and we're engaging with other people who may not be as prayed up as us, but they are with us, what happens? What happens to the to the to the to the tree, what does it start to do? It starts to do what? It starts to bear fruit. What happens to the bank account when you keep putting money in your savings account and it starts to draw interest? What happens? It starts to become more profitable. It gains profitable. interest. Yeah. And, 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 and so 
that's what I'm talking about. You see, all see now, now we're getting somewhere. Now we are changing mm-hmm. the world. See, a lot of people don't understand it this way. This conversation started out talking about character. What is character? Building good character. And as you start to build good character, what happens? There are some residual changes that take place. Don't get me started today. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to let one of y'all talk. I'm going to let one of y'all talk. I'm going to say, you understand what I'm saying? You understand where I'm going with this? Some changes Uh start to take place. There's this thing. See, a lot lot, lot of us in the church, we like to say the whole box Okay, I like the overflow, but but I like residual too, because residuals can be really good things, especially when you get into the financial world. Residuals, Jason, you know about money, right? You went to school for accounting, right, Jason? Okay, J. Dub, chime back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I studied accounting in college. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So explain residuals. I, I want people to get a picture of this. Now, the understanding I mean, of residuals is it's kind of like you make that initial investment and you put that money in and then and then from that, you know, um extra things oh. like you were saying, overflow and comes from that. You know, um with right. the residuals of you know, and even if you take that money out, the original money that you put in, because you've made so much and it started to put back on there, you're still gaining money mm-hmm. on top of that. So that initial investment is mm-hmm. gone but you're still you're still continuing to gain more. All right, Talk y'all. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? I'm, 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 I'm gonna hit you with a scripture, John 15 two, uh, and, 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 and I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be holier than that, but I want people to get this. John 15 and two. Okay, I'm reading the New King James. I'm actually gonna read this one. It says, "Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes bear away, fruit. and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit." In other words, the gift that keeps on giving. Y'all figure that. <laughs> that all of that because we wanted to build. Our our own character because we were going through a phase in life where we said, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be. And we wanted to change some things about our own lives. But guess what happens? Everything you come in touch with. Every, uh-oh, uh-oh. What did Stevie say in the color purple? Uh, everything <laughs> you touch. You hear what I'm saying? Everything is going to be blessed because you were there. Because you, the blessed person, with that, God decided to. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna calm down, but I'm just saying that that everything works. This is my. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it alone. But but I, I'm telling you. Mm, mm. It's all right. Like Jesus it's said. All right. Jesus said it. Jesus said it best. He said, "My Father has been working until now, and I've been working." You hear that? Jesus is working. So all of us. And, and that's what's really important about this. I mean, a lot of people don't get it, you know. I, and I and I assure you, and I promise you that 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 my whole purpose today is not to preach a sermon or or or, or, or that. But but keep in mind when you have people in your life. Now we're gonna start talking about pruning because you know God, you know God does that. Mm-hmm. He does that, right? Yeah. Right. When you have people in your life who are not profitable. They're mm-hmm. not profitable to you or for you. God has to prove right. them away. Then why right. is it that we, the more God starts pruning, the more we start trying to hold stuff, the more we start trying to hold on. If God is pruning, if God is removing something or someone from your life, you need to let it go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you preaching. You're preaching. You, 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 you need to let it go. I, I, I always say, I got this saying, and most people don't even understand it. When people have problems, and uh, of letting things go, I say, man, you better let them wild horses go. See, I'm from Texas, and I think of wild mustangs, wild horses. When you when you corral them, they still want to break free. You can break some of them, but there are some of them you just can't break. And you got to let them wild ones that just won't be broken. You got to let them go, right? And so that's kind of how our mind works. When we have these fleeting thoughts, when we have these thoughts that just won't go away, I got to be with her. I got to be with him. I got to have this. I got to have that. When those thoughts just want you got to open up. Now, this is how you let them go. I'm going to tell you. This is how you let it go. Check this out. Imagine this. I got to have this, whatever it is. And you go to your brother or your sister, and you confess that thing. And then you confess that thing to God. And then you and your brother say, okay, I'm going to hold you accountable, right? And then even though it's bothering you, it's killing you, it's ailing you, you accept that it ain't meant for you. And check it out. 
and you you may struggle, you may kick, you may scream, but it's an unproductive thing in your life, and you got to just let it go. It's easier said than done. Don't get it twisted. But like like I always say, and I've always heard, God said that it would not. He did not say it would be easy, but He said it would be worth it if you just resist the enemy mm-hmm. and allow Him to flee. Cause He's gonna flee. He eventually gonna leave you alone, especially when you start invoking the name of Jesus, when you start praying to God, when you stay on your face and on your knees. He's gonna. Hey, look at this. He's going to sprout legs and walk away. That's what happens. And how many of us are willing to do that? We are willing. Check this out. Y'all, how many, both of y'all have heard that saying, uh, one rotten apple spoils the whole barrel? I heard that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you had yep. a barrel of apples and one of them was rotten, would you put it back in the barrel with the good ones? No. See, that's these evil thoughts that we have. That, and, I, and I'm going to tell you where I believe it comes from. I believe it comes from the evil in the world, uh, 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 worldly possessions, uh, uh, satanic thoughts and things like that. I believe these worldly influences help to corrupt us. And what do we do with these worldly influences that corrupt us? What do we do with them? We stack our whole houses with them. Y'all don't believe me? Man, I'm telling you, Terry, tell them, mm. I've been struggling a month, uh, actually mm. probably a couple of years now, with buying me a new air fryer. I love these air fryers. Man, I struggle. <laughs> I struggle. I wake up at 2 in the morning, them infomercials on. I've got my oh, phone gosh. in my hands. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm tripping, but I'm being honest. The, the thing that's got me right now, I'm wrapped up. I can't even look at the TV with them. I want to get me a new air fryer, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get that new mm. wave one with the three trays because I like to air fry a bunch of stuff, right? And then I acted up. I acted up. Woke up at like three in the morning, and I'll be there. Ninja got this new cookware. Oh my God, this leather stick. I was like, oh my God. I'm not even lying. I'm like a crackhead. I like. I I got on my phone. I said, I'm gonna buy this. I put it in the shopping cart. I put all my information in, and I said, I said, Jesus, do I really need this? And I'm telling, I'm being honest. The little boy said, Nope. I said, Well, I'm gonna get it anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna get it anyway. <laughs> it's five payments for the ninja, fifty nine dollars for the for the air fryer, <laughs> and then for the ninja cookware. You know, I can put it on my PayPal account, and as long as I pay it off in six months, there's no interest. <laughs> I done talk myself into it. I'm like, a, I'm serious. I done talk myself into it, but 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 at, but at the same time. I ain't finna let those oh. really influences get in my house right now. I can't do it. Because if I buy that cookware, <laughs> guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to tell both of y'all what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you how it's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt me because I'm going to spend all my time trying to buy new food to go cook in this new cookware. I ain't going to have no bill money. <laughs> well, I, mean, I know it sounds silly, but I'm telling y'all, that's, how, that's my struggle. That's my struggle. So I try not to let the enemy in. I try not to let Satan have no influence. Because, you know, when you start working on your character, y'all know like I know, when you wound it, you're weak. You're not as strong as when mm-hmm. you're perfectly healthy, you know. So, so I know I'm making a joke, but I'm just being totally serious. We have to, these are some things that we really have to have to think about. We got to become correct because if we if we allow the enemy in, what's going to happen? I tell you, what's not going to happen? We're not going to have a clear vision of what God's plan is for our lives. Woo! Mm. Ooh, okay, I'm going to let one of y'all talk right now. Uh, uh, Terry, come, come on and explain to her why we want to have a clear vision for God's plan for our lives. I'm going to let one of y'all talk because I'm going to talk too much. I'm going to talk too much. I know we only got a couple more minutes left, but I, 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 I tell, go ahead. Go ahead. Jump in. I'm, I'm, I'm going why on and on. Why do we need to have a clear quiet. vision? Uh, tell the people because somebody they... needs to hear this. Somebody out there struggling because Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. So so let's, let's, let's go. We'll talk about that later, but let's go ahead and tell them a little bit about it. Go ahead. Let's get them ready. We're going to prime them. We're going to prime them. We're going to build some character today. Mm. Go ahead. <laughs> Why do we need God's vision for yeah, our lives? Yeah, we need clear. Yeah, we need clear. Vision. clear. So we can have direction. Yeah. So we can have direction. That's yeah. more than anything. So we can have we, direction so we can, and, we can, and so mm-hmm. we can fulfill our purpose. Mm. That's right. And fulfill our purpose. Jess, you want to have another stab? You want to want to add your interpretation? I know I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take over the last of the convo, but I just, <laughs> I'm warm up here now. I'm going to stop drinking these drinks. I'm going to watch it. Go ahead, Jason. I'm listening to you. No, I, I think, you know, <laughs> you know, vision is always good because without vision, you don't know where you're going. And, and mm-hmm. when you talk about making those decisions, 
you know, if you don't see mm-hmm. the, uh, the, 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 the the goal, it's easy to make the bad right. choice. You know, so right. we need right. that vision. And and, I, and like you said, it's not just vision of what the world wants, it's a vision of what God wants because that 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 vision will lead you down an eternal path, you know, um, mm-hmm. where the rewards are greater than anything you can think of. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mm. Whew. Man, I'll tell y'all what, I'll tell you what. I'm sorry that the choice comes to an end. I do want to finish this up a little. Maybe we can finish it next week, but but, but definitely, because I, I got about seven, eight more points I need to talk about, because I'm really saying, because, you know, it, it's important to have a clear vision. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, uh, 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 this wonderful young lady that I used to date, she, man, I'm saying, I used to call her my walking King James. I'm telling you, the girl knew, man, I'm telling you, you just start off the scripture, she'll finish it for you. And she'll at least tell you basically where it is, right? And, 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 and this one uh, uh, passage of scripture, Proverbs, I don't remember. I'll, I'll look it up. But it basically says, where there is no revelation, uh, the people cast off the strength. Prepare. But happy strength. is he. You said what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you said it right. You said it right. Go ahead. Say it wrong. Oh, 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 man, you threw me off. Uh, oh, but happy is he who keeps the law. Right. Who listen. Listen, listen. I'm, 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 I'm just gonna say that that it basically says, translated loosely, it says, if you ain't got no vision, my people gonna perish. I know that. That's why it's important to keep your eye on God's plan because if you have none, you will perish. Y'all don't believe me? Y'all don't believe me? That there were some people that was wandering out in the, uh, in the, uh, in the wilderness. They were called Israelites, and they didn't make it to the promised land. Now, of course, it ain't because they didn't have vision; it's because they just refused to see. But anyway, but that's the best I could do on such a spur of the moment kind of thing. But, 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 I, but I think that 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 because we are we we are seeking God, um, um, I, I I think the Spirit of God is needed in all of us so that we can see the vision. That, uh, of what God has planned for us. Does that make sense? In order for us to mm-hmm. see God's plan, we need to have the spirit of God within us. Y'all, y'all don't get me. Uh, and, and, and so we really, we really, really, really need to focus, and we need to just practice on developing that, that character, that godly character. Jason, I love how you always put it. I say you can't be a good man unless you're a godly man, but, but you know how you and I disagree, but I do want to say that you are 100% right. Godly character is what we need because we can be, uh, uh, we can have decent character, uh, good, what's considered good character here on earth, and still be light years, eons away from God's will. Am I right? And so that's why this is really important that we seek you first the kingdom, right? And so yep. with that being said, I'm going to apologize for going over a little bit, but I'm going to invite uh, Jason and Terry, if you guys have a last word before we close out. No, I'm good. I think you said it all, Brother Cedric. Yeah, you said it all, Cedric. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I just, I just, I just, I just, you know, this is really near and dear in my heart because I see so many brothers. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. There's so many brothers who just are, they just don't have it. Like, I, I'm going to give you a for instance. I'm not going to call out no names. I'm going to give you a for instance. Yesterday I went to visit a friend of mine. Um. And actually, his granddaughter had texted me. She lives in California. She texted me, and uh, we're pretty close as friends. And she said, hey, Papa, they diagnosed him with COVID on Tuesday, and can't nobody get him to go to the doctor, and he ain't answering his phone, his battery's dead, whatever. It keeps going to voicemail, and nobody can get in touch with him. Well, he's got, he's like 80-plus years old, and he's got kids who are in their 50s and 60s who live right here in the city who are afraid to go to his house. And so I'm like, man, hey, this is my partner. I'm up and I'm out. But I'm going to tell you something about this man. This man, I love him to death. Don't get it twisted. But y'all ever, anybody ever had a grumpy old grandpa or a grumpy old neighbor who only (laughs) thought about their own self? Ain't thinking about nothing or nobody but their own self? This is mm-hmm. this is a guy that I call a very close friend, but I, I have a reverence for him because of his age, and he means well. He just ain't never done, you know what I'm saying? He just ain't never been that kind of guy his whole life. But but here I am saying, you know what, guy? This dude treats me bad. I remember before his wife passed on, she'd say, 
I ain't gonna call his name out. Honey, why do you talk? He said you're so bad. That's the only friend you got. You know you go to house city. He the only one. <laughs> you know. And he and this guy treats me like woo woo, like I'm his red headed great grandson. <laughs> beat me over the back with a stick. But I go to his house, and, and and this is what I'm talking about about character. This is what I'm talking about. You see, I I, mm-hmm. I, I get it that he's rough. I get it that he comes off to me as being selfish. I get it. Is he really a selfish man? I can tell you now. He's not. He's just gotten to a point in his life where he's tired of taking care of other people, like his kids and whatnot, right? And right. I recognize this. I believe that God showed me that, but I show up. And he refuses to go to the hospital. I call the paramedics, and he's fighting me every step of the way, and I'm telling the paramedics, oh, no, he's going, because if he tells them no, they can't take him. I said, he's going, so I got right. him to stand up. Me and one of the EMTs, we got him to stand up. And the brother took two steps, and he was out of breath. I'm going to tell you something. The guy has a way of dealing with this stuff. Mm-hmm. He was out of breath. scared him so much, he never once said he ain't going to go to the hospital. It took us 10 minutes to walk him about 30 feet to get out the door because he mm. could not walk. He took one, two mm. steps, and he's out of breath. And, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, uh, 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 the point I'm trying to make is this. God has given me a vision for this man, right? And it's not for me to question it. It's not for me to chastise him for being who he is. Mm-hmm. It's for me, here it is, for me to be a cross bearer, right? Because you don't know this man. Maybe I know he knows God. I know he knows uh, God. But this mm-hmm. may be one of those moments where he says, you know what, God, thank you. Now it's time for me to mm-hmm. do my part. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. things start to change in his life. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Or, here it is, I may be blessed because I was a blessing to somebody else. God blesses me. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I ain't talking about no monetary thing. I'm not talking right, about that. I'm right, saying that right. God softens my heart for him. God allows me to understand where he's coming from. You see what I'm saying? And so that's why I think it's, 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 it's very important for us to have a clear vision. It's very important for us to understand. We don't have to check this out. Check this out. <clears throat> Did y'all know that to be obedient? Uh, 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 or how, how, let, me, let me figure out how to put this. I'm going to put this right here. Okay, okay, okay. Has either of you guys ever thought that to be obedient, you do not have to know the outcome? Of a situation, does that make sense? <laughs> uh, 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 I think me and Jason talked about this before. Um, um, the sacrifice. Uh, who was it? He was taking Isaac up on the on the mountain. He was gonna he was gonna put forth the sacrifice, right? Did okay. you know that nobody really knew the outcome? But obedient, obedient. He was obedient to God. God said he wanted mm-hmm. to sacrifice. He was obedient to God. He did not know the outcome. All he knew that mm-hmm. God was God wanted to sacrifice, and God said, "Take on old, take old Isaac up there, and I need you to sacrifice him." Mm-hmm. See, listen. A lot of us think we got to know the outcome. We got to know the answer to something in order to, to to be obedient to the word of God. But don't you know that's not true obedience? Right? When you think of Moses and when God said, go tell Pharaoh, I said, let my people go. And Moses said, oh, I can't, you know, I can't talk. Was, was he obedient and doing what God said? Absolutely. But, but, but think about it. Think about it. Think about it. God had to kind of show him the way. True faith is us just getting out here doing it, not seeing any evidence of it, just getting out here doing it. That's the point I really want to make. When you want to start mm-hmm. making differences in people's lives, when your character, when you're really trying to develop that good character, you got to go into a situation not knowing the outcome. The only outcome that you know is that God put you here, and God will see you through, and God will get you out. That's all you got to know. And, and, and I want to tell y'all right now today, I'm telling you, once you got a good, clear plan of God's, uh, a good vision of God's plan for your life, that's what's going to happen because it's going to spark this, and we're going to pick it up next week because I'm going to close this big old hole under my nose. <laughs> We're going to pick it up next week. Next week. It's I want you right. to remember this. And I, want, I want you to practice this. Because once God has allowed you uh, a little insight into his plan, his vision for your life, I, I need for us to do this one thing. Here it is. And I want you all to do this and pray about this to next week. Because I'm going to need one of y'all to take over because I'm going to be hoarse. 
communicate with God. I'm gonna need y'all to know how to communicate. All right. So with that being said, with that being said, we're gonna leave. I'm gonna make a note of this one. We're gonna communicate with God. Right? You know, we're, we're gonna combo with God. Uh, 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 I, I need y'all to pick this up for me next week because. God is in the blessing business, but but I, I really truly this is a wonderful podcast. I'm having a really good time, um, but uh, I want to go ahead and get ready to close out. The both of you said you didn't have any closing uh, closing thoughts, so I want to say this. Y'all know how we do. Since Kim, you can go ahead and cue up the music right now because we can go ahead and close out here. Um, <laughs> I want to encourage I want to encourage everybody to seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. And, and, and when God says. Uh, 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 all these things shall be added unto you. I'm telling you, I need y'all to see God on that one. I want you to know what God wants for you, because I'm gonna be praying that that He shows you, uh, whether He whether He speaks to you audibly or in your dreams. I want you to understand that. And when we come back here next week, let's have a talk about it. So y'all know how we do. Find something you love, right? Right. You gotta find it, and you chase it. And you embrace it. And that is your relentless pursuit with Minister Cedric, along with Terry and Jason. We're saying have a wonderful weekend and God bless you. And we're out. Have a good night. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> All right. Bless you, brothers. Check this out, right? Check this out, right? Don't never be ashamed of who you are. You serve God and serve God proudly. The fact is you should be celebrated.